Uh, yeah, thank you, thank you, Pindy. Um, how's everybody uh, feeling today about the SpaceX launch? Who watched that today? I don't know. I, <clears throat> unrelated to what I'm going to talk about, but I, I wasn't around for when we landed on the moon, but didn't it just feel like humanity was full of possibility again? It was awesome to watch. Landing those two rockets. Oh, anyway, if you didn't see it, check it out tonight. <clears throat> uh, so this is just... Um, okay, cool. I'm just going to talk uh, for a few minutes, uh, tell you a bit about how I got involved in uh, uh, my current companies, and uh, talk about values-based businesses uh, a little bit. Uh, and I was told it would be cake. Um, so this is uh, this is me. I, uh, I'm from Vancouver, and uh, as Pindy kind of mentioned, you know, I, uh, uh, I I started my career in, in the mailroom, looking stamps, uh, stamps and envelopes at a brokerage. Uh, you know, as a kid, I was in restaurants, and, and then I spent about 10 years in finance. Ended uh, uh, with a, uh, a stint on Wall Street, and uh, you know, I got recruited down to to New York City, and uh, had a more formal training um, issuing bonds. And it's exactly as interesting as it sounds, uh, but it wasn't for me. I was not. Uh, uh, Wall Street is uh, about making money. We all know that, and uh, the reputation is real. Uh, you're looking for ways to make money and to try and keep a little bit of it for yourself. Um, I moved back to Vancouver about 10 years ago and uh, been working on entrepreneurial stuff ever since. Uh, the one that people uh, know, you know, because it's quite visible, is Taco Fino. And uh, this is me and my partner, Jason. Uh, we started in 2009. He started in Tofino, and I'm the guy that brought it over here. How many people know Taco Fino in the room? <laughs> All right. So people kind of... Um, you, you know, uh, we were, we, we are still partners, and uh, but I, I, I'll tell a quick story. We uh, had a big fight, uh, as business partners do, and I'm sure there's lots of co-founders in the room. Um, but this fight actually ended in us saying, uh, well, and Jason saying to me, "I want to run this business by myself," and me saying, "You know what? Fine, you go run it by yourself," and uh, and I did uh, a totally stereotypical thing took my 10-month-old son, uh, and my wife and I went to India. <laughs> and I literally, literally uh, had an eat, pray, love uh, three-month trip to India. Um, I went because I was sick of the Wall Street model, uh, and I wanted to do something that had an impact. And so uh, I had a, a connection over there, and so I spent about three months and by the time I got done with uh, India, I had three job offers, uh, all in impact investing, all in Mumbai. And uh, my wife, uh, we got back to uh, North America, and my wife said, um, I'm pregnant again. <laughs> and I don't want to have the babies in Mumbai. And if, has anybody here been to, been to India? By show of hands. Yeah, it is a lovely, beautiful, filthy, dirty country. It is impossible to raise a little baby there. I mean, the Indians do it, but my wife was just not up for it. Um, especially in Mumbai, the air quality is terrible. It's a tough, tough place. Uh, and the ironic thing is that my impact investing jobs would have been tackling things like clean, access to clean water, clean energy. Um, but since that wasn't in the cards for me, uh, sort of fortune... Uh, came knocking, I guess, again, and uh, Jason, my partner at Taco Fino, said, hey, listen, while you were away, um, we lost 20 grand uh, in December, and I think we're going to lose 20 grand again in January. And will you come back, and will you give me a hand? Uh, and I said, yeah, you know what, I'd, I'd like to come back. Um, but when I come back, I want to turn this company into something that we're really, really proud of, uh, something that's values-based. So... You know, that was when we really started getting involved in having uh, ocean-wise sustainable ingredients, focusing on uh, all sustainable packaging. People don't know this, but everything that comes off those trucks can go in the compost, packaging, you know, every, everything. Uh, we even take the uh, 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 waste oil out of the uh, deep fryers and process it into biodiesel and run the trucks off it. So if you look closely, you'll see a bumper sticker on some of the trucks that say these trucks run on fish tacos. Um, and it's not something that we particularly advertise, and I'm telling you guys tonight here, but it's not something that normally, like, we talk a lot about, but it's something that I think people recognize and keeps people coming back. Um, it's a values-based business. Uh, 
Uh, Foodie approached me as Taco Fino to come and uh, get on the platform. And I said uh, that I was interested. But what I really became enamored with it was the idea that instead of having hundreds of meals that were sustainably sourced and so forth, uh, at Foodie, uh, where we turn great restaurants into corporate caterers, we had the ability to do this on a massive scale. In North America, corporate food waste is a, is a big, big problem. And at Foodie, we can do tens of thousands of meals a day. Uh, and so I joined Foodie. Um, this is back uh, about four years ago. Um, so the ability to kind of hold those values, take those values to something uh, that was obviously tech enabled and had a, a more scalable business model uh, was really, um, you know, that was really the selling point for me. Uh, and I'm not pitching here, uh, but, you know, the, the reason why this is such a great um, uh, model for restaurateurs is that the restaurant business sucks. You basically have an hour to get people in and out of the restaurant. That's that black curve. And so we take all that off-peak capacity that restaurant kitchens have, and we ask them to make catering food. And we show up, take it out of their hair before they get ready for their walk-in traffic. We don't cannibalize anything. We give them access to a new, uh, you know, a new, a new, um, um, uh, new market. Uh, this quote is something that I'm really proud of, and this happens um, around the, around the system. So this is a story of Uncommon Cafe, uh, and this is not sort of me being. Uh, you know, uh, uh, bragging about this kind of thing because all we are really is a conduit between local communities, uh, local businesses that decide to support local restaurants and have this kind of shared value. So, you know, it was our local corporate uh, businesses, and I count among those, you know, RBC and PwC tonight, that have a mandate to support local, to support sustainable businesses. Um, and. Uh, in this case, particularly, the, the, uh, the connection between those two actually saved the business. Um, Jill and James at the top there, uh, they're actually mar they got married uh, last year. So it's a really nice story. But um, anyway, I'm getting short on time. I want to make uh, sort of wrap this up to why should I care about values-based businesses uh, as a tech person? You're probably thinking, I'll just make an elegant product, uh, and everyone will love it. And who cares about values? Well. Uh, I'll leave uh, this uh, with you. Well, not I won't leave that picture, but uh, does anybody know who I'm standing with here? Yeah, Rick Kurzweil, great. Um, so Google, uh, he heads up Google's AI division. Uh, had a chance to meet him, actually because RBC sponsored him to come to Vancouver. So uh, Dom and Elizabeth, thank you. Um, Google, when it first started, wherever it's gone, you know, we can have a discussion about that after, but when it started, its value statement was pretty altruistic. Okay, it was to organize the world's information and make it accessible to everybody. So if you sit and think about that, think about early days at Google, and for those of us that are old enough to remember when there was another search engine, you could go to Alta Vista if you wanted to. You could work at Alta Vista if you wanted to, but there's a group of engineers and salespeople and marketing people that went to Google and made Google Google when there was dogpile and everything else that you, you know, were competing for the same space. Uh, so I'm going to submit to you guys tonight that having a values-based business uh, 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 is a really important thing for tech startups. And the company that's being built today that's going to disrupt Google and become the next Google is a group of young people sitting around together over shared values. That's it. How about, why are you Terminator in that last picture? Yeah, that's uh, a good he, one. So, uh, uh, Ray Kurzweil is famous for the singularity, basically, where uh, computing capacity and uh, uh, human uh, processing power become the same uh, at the same time in the very near future, and we become cyborgs, essentially cyborgs. So. Is that a dream of yours? No, that's his, that's, that's his dream. But uh, I don't know. Yeah, I look better there than my headshot, so. Anyway. Uh, any questions for Ryan? Oh, I love when our photographer is interested. That's amazing. Go for it. 
Hi, Ryan. Hi. Um, if sustainability is so important to Taco Fino, how come you don't talk about using fish tacos to run the trucks? Um, <clears throat> well, I think some of that language is a bit bankrupt. Uh, you know, like, and I, I'd rather that, I mean, we, 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 we make sure people know things are ocean wise. We kind of treat it with a little bit of humor in that, you know, we have these bumper stickers that are kind of, you know, an inside joke. Um, I think it's kind of de rigueur now, right? People expect that. Uh, this is these are standards that you know specifically in the re like in the restaurant business um, that we all care about and uh, so I think greenwashing it kind of comes off a little bit as um, I don't know, like marketing or something like that right so uh, I, I I figure you put it out there and let people kind of um, find out one of the things I learned early on uh, actually from my partner Jason at Taco Fino is you know. Restaurants, they're the one thing that you don't need to sell. Um, in fact, it works the other way. The information around restaurants is like the weather now. You know, you find out immediately if something is good. Everybody's talking about it in your friend group. Have you tried that? Have you tried that? If you go out and start marketing things, it's actually saying, at least to me and I think to many people, the opposite. Oh, wow, this guy has to tell me to go and eat this hamburger. It must be terrible, you know? So, um, yeah, so that's basically, I, I think, the ethos. Yeah. Okay, Connor? Hi. Uh, knowing what you know now, what advice would you give your 24-year-old self? Uh, hmm. Yeah, I don't know. It's a, it's, a, it's a tough question, you know, because 24, I just landed my job out of business school uh, to go to Wall Street, and I was super psyched. Uh, and, you know, three years on, uh, I didn't realize that it was going to kind of disappoint me as much as it did, It'd be as sort of uh, as hollow ex uh, experience as it was. Um, living in New York's fun, um, especially when you're 24. But... Uh, you know, th those, those bad experiences are necessary. You know, advice I give uh, now to young people is, you know, go and have, go and figure out what you hate doing. It's okay to spend some time not being right. You know, I, uh, I think the, the, you know, I always sort of was frustrated when I was in high school and university about people that knew exactly what they wanted to be. I want to be a veterinarian. You know, and you're just like, wow, it must just be so easy for you. You know exactly what you want to be. Good, congratulations, you know, like, I have no idea. And, uh, and so I've kind of come to the place where that kind of being, uh, being comfortable with that ambiguity, um, but balancing it with just intellectual curiosity is, is an okay natural balance to be in. And in fact, I think that that's kind of a healthy thing, you know, so, um, I don't know if that's good advice or bad advice, but I probably wouldn't have taken it anyway. <laughs> Remy? Um, in regards to having a value-based business, I think when you're at a startup or a founder's phase, those values are usually pretty kind of like unwritten, and they're just tacitly known. They're, they're the sum of the values of the people in the room. But then how many, like how big is Foodie now? How many employees do you have? So we're like 75 in, in 10 cities and two countries. Exactly. So when you hit that number and you hit that scalability, you kind of have to like codify your values and also find a way to distribute. So how do you take something that is kind of the sum of the people in the room at the beginning and, and without kind of perverting it, codify it and allow it to be scaled to more and more people who maybe don't, have those values or, or sign on to them right away, but have to be kind of like brought in? I guess, how do you scale your values? Yeah, yeah. No, I think that's a, <clears throat> a really good question. And uh, I can't say that uh, I, I have a great answer because at 75 people, you know, we're still relatively small and we still have uh, trouble with it. In fact, one of the reasons I, I came here tonight is because, you know, I, I want a, um, you know, well-worn path. You know, some of my guys are here, uh, you know, and this is a conversation we're having internally about like, yeah, you can have stuff up on the wall. You can talk about stuff. Hey, these are our values, right? And, and we, 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 we go through this exercise, and, and it's literally like plastered around in, in every office you go to. You know, we have 10 offices. Um, it's, I think, at, the most important thing is in the hiring, and that's where we've made the most mistakes, right? It's like, it should be like almost an indoctrination at a certain, to a certain point, right? Uh, the first 100 people, you know, and I feel like if I could go back and do it over, it would have been like, I would have been at every single interview 
and making sure like, you know, like, do, do you think like this? Like, you know, like, what kind of car do you drive? I don't know, just like, uh, <laughs> but, uh, but I, so yeah, codifying it, I think the, the, like you say, the first six or eight people, like when we started, we were five people at Invoke. It's easy, right? It's like, this is how we, this is how we think. We don't want that restaurant, right? Because you know, we want this. But at a certain point, it's like you have to have these systems in place. I would say the, the, the number one thing, though, is, and it always comes back to this, is making sure that you have the right people that you, you start stacking onto that original core posse. Last question from Dave, right? Uh, I'm not familiar f with Foodie. Do you guys use the same sort of? Uh, uh, do we use the same kind? Yes. Yeah. So at Foodie, it's uh, it's either compostable or it's recyclable. In the case of some of the some of the platter stuff, but yeah. Have you guys looked into like reusable takeout containers? Um, I know there's a company in Portland that does it. GoBox. Oh. Love to connect with you after to talk more about it. Not me personally. It's oh, someone yeah. in Portland. Well, or hear more yeah. about it. Uh, go box. Yeah, okay, cool. cool. Thanks. Yeah. Um, yeah, the issue to some extent with the like with the reusable stuff and one of the challenges that we tackle with so we're kinda after the catering business, which I, I was a caterer when I was a kid. Uh, part of the problem with reusable is you gotta figure out how you go back and get it without driving again and, and uh, you know, you've got these big catering trucks that are sort of you know, idling out in front of these places while they run up like a few. Uh, so we're focused more on like reducing our number of trips and making sure that we're accurately sizing, you know, bicycle, car, truck based on the, the load and stuff like that. Um, you know, and, and making sure that uh, the stuff is, is recyclable or, or compostable. But yeah, love to look at it. Cool. Thanks, Thanks for the suggestion. Look at this. Okay. You're making your business better for you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks.